And thank you everyone for sticking around to the end for my talk. So today we want to talk about privacy on the internet and I want to talk about the worst violation of your privacy there is. It's not a hacker, it's not the US NSA, it's not the Chinese government, it's the advertising industry. The advertising industry has driven most of the big data technology and innovation we see and they've constantly driven to take more and more information from you as you browse the internet. There's an old saying, if you're not paying for the product, you are the product. Google spends billions in operations and has tons of staff and servers and networks. How do you think they pay for it? Facebook's lovely. How do you think they pay for it? They pay for it by selling your information and your attention to the advertising industry. When I was a grad student, I was invited to work at a think tank at a group called SAMSI for a two week intensive focus on digital advertising. And at the time I knew nothing about it. I thought, this is interesting, let's see what this is about. And they were paying for a free trip, why not? There were heads of you know, Google, Facebook, uh, a bunch of other ad companies you haven't heard of. And we spent two weeks working on the mathematics. How do you make more money from advertising on the internet? How do you monetize all this data? How do you convince people to buy your product? And it blew me away. In fact, I wound up writing about half of my dissertation based on some of the work I did there, and it was fascinating. Uh, so as an example for you, Google generated $67 billion in profit last year in the US from advertising. Facebook only did 17 billion from advertising. It's driving most of the internet. In fact, you could argue that a lot of the web now is just a machine to serve you ads. But let's back up and talk about how we got here. In 1922, AT&T got the first commercial radio license for what they called toll broadcasting. And the very first radio ad ever was a 10 minute spot that cost 100 US dollars. And it was a real estate developer pitching Long Island apartments that they wanted people to buy. Fast forward, uh, 1941, television. Bulova bought a 10 second ad during a uh, sports, I think it was baseball. America runs on Bulova time. And that was the first TV ad ever. The pattern, is that advertisers were sponsoring content as a way to get to the audience. They didn't know what else to do it, like a magazine or a newspaper. We'll buy this chunk of time and get to the people that watch this. Now, the internet changed all that. The very first, sorry, my clickers, there we go. The very first internet ad ever was in 1993, and it was for a Silicon Valley law firm, and it was just a link. In 1994, hotwire.com, which has gone on to become Wired Magazine, uh, AT&T bought the very first banner ad and that's what it was. And they were predicting the future that you would be clicking on things to learn. And this was the banner. If you ever clicked here, you will. Back then, website, the website basically had a page where they sold, uh, I think, 10 or 12 spots. You could buy an ad for a fixed price. But the ad industry wasn't happy. They were constantly, constantly pushing for innovation. So the next innovation happened in 1995, which is what's called the CPM model, where they said to websites, wait, we don't want to just pay a flat fee. How many people, how much traffic do you have? We'll pay so X dollars, $20 for 1,000 visitors you get on the website, or $10 per 1,000, or whatever your website could generate. And there's a whole industry around selling banner ads based on cost per 1,000. The advertisers still weren't happy, because they said, well, hey, lots of people are coming. They don't click on my ad. I don't get any benefit. So the next level was pay-per-click. And that was innovated in 1998 by Bill Gross, uh, who worked with Infoseek and Yahoo. It was actually not Google, Google took it from him. And he came up with the idea of auctioning, hey, we'll auction off pay-per-click and sell it to the highest bidder. The advertising industry got a little happier. And, okay. Now, there's an old saying, John Wanamaker, who was department store owner in, in New York, said, I know half my advertising dollars are wasted, but I don't know which half. <laughs> and this has been the struggle for the advertising industry forever. How do we, best profit or best leverage our ads. And the next innovation that they came up with was a cookie. How many people here are familiar with cookies? And not chocolate chip. <laughs> okay. This is what a real cookie looks like. All the way at the tip of the arrow. In other words, it's invisible and you can't see it. Briefly, for those of you who don't know what a cookie is, when you load a web page, it's loaded in pieces. First you load the, the HTML and the text and then your browser pulls in the images, and the images can come from different parts of the cloud and servers and whatever they've optimized. So what the advertisers did is they got smart. An advertising company says, wait a minute, we can put a one pixel picture that's clear in the bottom corner of the page that no one can see, 
And that comes from our server. It doesn't come from CNN.com or whatever website you're reading. But when you do that, we can use a cookie to track you. A cookie is basically a piece of information that a website can put on your browser. And it's useful. If you log into a website, the website puts basically your serial number or code into your browser. So when you go back 10 minutes later, it still knows who you are. The websites can request this information back. But it only goes back to the website that put the information as a security measure. So by doing this with these little invisible pixels, now tracking companies and advertisers can track you. Google has cookies on almost every website on the planet. Facebook has cookies on websites, uh, and on Twitter, and on and on and on. Um, and this is a problem, because your entire browsing history is now exposed to these companies. They don't need your permission. They don't ask, they don't, you don't even see it. More so, um, we went to the TEDx Hong Kong website. <laughs> Wasn't too bad, there were three cookies. You have Google, you have Facebook, and you have a third one, I don't recall the name, used for tracking email submissions to see if your emails are being opened. Because what I can do is I can send you an email with a cookie in it that can look like my company logo or anything else, and when you open the email, I now know that. And if you forward the email to your friend, I know that. This morning at breakfast, uh, one of the people has been sending out CVs to look for work, and he rather brilliantly put a cookie in there. So we can see when he sends it to a company, does it just get opened once? Or hey, it's gotten forwarded to London and to here and here and oh, they're obviously passing my resume around the company. Very, very clever. So if you get an email and read it, and then you go to a website, everything's connected through these cookies. And there are companies now that aggregate these cookies and this tracking from multiple other businesses and sell this as a database. And then if you buy something with e-commerce, and they participate in this, now they know something about your demographics and where you live, and it's all connected. And again, the name of the game is to constantly optimize the ads you see. Your typical internet ad gets clicked three to 4% of the time it's shown, and the ad industry doesn't like that. If they could raise that a few percentage points, that would be great. And Google operates on a pay-per-click model, which means they only get money if someone clicks the ad. So the game for Google becomes what ad do I show you that you're most likely to click on? And which ad will make me the most money if you click on it? I don't want an ad where I'm gonna get two cents if you click on it, I'm gonna add where I want an ad where I get two dollars if you click on it. So they're constantly running these optimization algorithms. That includes reading your Gmail, that includes location information from your cell phone, that includes, uh, if you use the Google Voice calling stuff, that includes transcripts of your voicemails that you receive, any piece of data they can to figure out what ad to show you. Um, I did a study where I visited the top 25,000 most trafficked websites as ranked by Alexa, and we looked at who's trying to stick cookies, we wrote a little software program, who's trying to stick cookies on us, and see what they do. Google, not surprisingly, is on almost every website. Facebook is next, and on down the line. What you see is if you connect them, and I, this is a, too hard to fit all of this on a slide, but the red, rep, each point represents a website. The red is Google, the blue is Facebook, the dark green is double click, which Google now owns. Um, and you can see that by just going to a few websites, lots of companies know who you are and lots of companies can track you and share your information. So this isn't a hacker, this isn't the NSA or the US government, it's just you're voluntarily exposing this. The other interesting thing is I'm sure as you go to lots of blogs and websites, you see these fun little buttons. Hey, click here to post this on Facebook. Hey, you can tweet this to your friend. Well. The minute you download that little picture of an F, that comes from Facebook. So they now, you don't have to click it. The fact that that picture loaded in your browser now means they know you were there. And if you've logged into Facebook, that now gets connected with your Facebook profile and everything you've posted there. So they know a whole lot about you. Now, interestingly, there's a company called Add This, and they put out this free toolkit. Hey, you wanna have a, a blog or a website? Don't worry about drawing the buttons. We'll just give you this little widget. You just plug it in, you get all the buttons, it's on us. The dirty secret is this is owned by Oracle. Oracle then aggregates all of that data and sells it as part of their service to large companies to optimize advertising. Oracle brags that they now get data from 15 million websites because of this lovely free widget with the buttons. So there's a lot of stuff out there. The next evolution that's happened is what's called real-time bidding. A little bit scary and fascinating. When I visit CNN.com and I click go in my browser, <laughs> not to pick on CNN, um, instantly 
an, a bid, a request is sent out to all these ad companies saying, here's this guy, here's all the information we know about him, here's his ID number if you want to look him up in your database or all the stuff, how much do you want to pay to show him your ad? And all these companies submit their bids in about 10 milliseconds and the winner gets to show me the ad. So the ads you see on the page are real time getting fought over by these advertisers wanting to show you the ad. They like using statisticians like me because I help develop math models to say, hey, which ad is the most likely to get clicked on for this person based on their profile and what we know. So there's lots of very advanced mathematics and lots of the big data and data science that we now use in lots of toolkits all comes from the ad world. This was a chart done several years ago looking at all the different companies involved in the ecosystem of digital ads and selling ads and managing and trading your information. And it's massive, and that's a five-year-old chart. It's much, much worse now. So the question is, what can you do about it? Me, I don't like seeing ads. I don't like being tracked that much. So there are three plugins I run in my browser, and they're available for both Chrome and Firefox. Uh, in the upper right is uh, Unblock Origin. It's free, and it will block the nice thing is the minute you load up a page, even on Facebook, all the ads go away. It's beautiful. Uh, but it also blocks a lot of these tracking cookies. Not all of them. The other one that's really nice, the other two were both put out by the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Privacy Badger blocks much more tracking stuff. And HTTPS Everywhere will make sure that you use an encrypted connection to any website you go to just in case someone's sniffing your traffic. So these three together don't slow anything down. In fact, they speed up your browsing because you don't waste bandwidth loading ads and you're not really tracked anymore, and your uh, experience is much smoother. So this is my takeaway. One more thing I want to add, though. Maybe, just as a food for thought, ads aren't that bad. You know, maybe it's a fair price to pay. I get free business networking, I get free social networking, I get to upload and share photos with my friends, I have a Translate app on my phone, I can talk to anybody in any language in the world, I get weather, I get maps, I get directions. That's pretty good for free if you're just gonna show me some ads sometime. I don't really mind. Uh, a good example, I took up scuba diving last year and I looked at a bunch of scuba blogs and was reading a bunch of stuff because I was excited about it. Next thing I know, I'm seeing ads for scuba gear and I'm seeing coupons and discounts and free shipping. And Well, that's okay, that's sort of my hobby and what I'm into. So yes, they're tracking you for everything, but the big question is, is that okay? Food for thought. Anyway, thank you. Thanks for your time.